Ninu Chebutananu Nake Teliadu. Could you understand what I was saying? Well, to be honest, neither could I. <laughs> That's Telugu, the language of my family from India. Ever since I was younger, I've always felt a sort of disconnect from my background. Heck, I went to a Chinese monastery, learning Mandarin before I even heard about my mother tongue. Ever since I was younger, I've also felt this disconnect from my background, because I could never fit in with the other Asian kids, and I was Indian. This feeling of outsiderness was exemplified when I went to India for the first time. Between visiting every 10 or so years and the environment not being what I was used to, I felt different. I did not know if this was a good different or a bad different until I met my extended family. Seeing everyone just communicate and laugh with each other made me feel isolated and jealous. I just felt this detachment from everyone around me. <coughs> I always thought of myself as part of my Indian family, but now I didn't know if I was. Looking back, nothing seemed missing from my ethnic upbringing. I would go to religious temples. I would even be able to recite a couple lines from popular Telugu movies, like Bahubali or other Telugu cinema. But there was something missing. I would still only know the bare minimum as a child, because I would always choose to do things the American way. Why would I ever need to talk about the little Krishna in school when Geronimo Stilton was what was popping off? So, I only knew the bare minimum, but I wonder why I never had my culture pushed on me more. When I asked my parents about how they were raised, they brought up this high-stakes testing culture of India where opportunity was like a game of politics, filled with constant backstabbing, greed, and adversities. And they had to stay on their A-game 24 hours, seven days a week. I was raised to perform like this in school, even if I would rather spend my time doing something else, like playing with my best friend, the iPad. <laughs> the contrast between my life and that of my parents is evident. While I stayed up trying to figure out how to beat level eight of Super Mario Bros, they would be studying for an exam that would decide the rest of their lives. I was basically playing video games while they were shipped to boarding school. Quite the contrast. They never see America the way I see it. They still believed in this high stakes education system that they grew up in. And I can't really blame them for that. If I had a nickel for every time they flex their class or state placements on me, while I was playing video games, I would be able to retire early, and a millionaire. <laughs> though, jokes aside though, to put it into perspective, life was different in India. It was difficult if you never worked hard enough. So while I see America as my home, they still see it as this land of opportunity, where success is only given to those who work 10 times harder than others. And success can mean different things to different people. To some, it could mean material wealth, others, fame, others, respect. But for me, success just means acceptance and belonging. But for my parents, the idea was more simple than that. Life just has to be better than what it was. And this ambition of theirs meant that outperforming everyone while ignoring all distractions was what was expected of me. So while this isn't the intention of making me a bright student with a well-set future, it made me resentful towards my roots and pushed me towards the American way, one where I felt like I could breathe. America has a lot of immigrants from so many parts of the world, so you'd think it'd be culturally accepting, acknowledging diversity when it's due. Wrong. It places a really high demand on assimilation. You can think of assimilation like a melting pot, where the minority culture tries to rapidly blend into the dominant one. And you can think of multiculturalism, what America is more perceived as, as a salad bowl, where all pieces of culture can retain their basic identity while all still being together. And this idea of a salad bowl seems really cool. However, it's never accomplished because of just how easy it is to feel this pressure to assimilate. Let me put this idea into perspective. Let me throw out the term whitewashed. Have you ever heard it? It's a term in school that means that has always been used as an insult. For example, someone gets a pair of Air Force Ones and 
blink of an instant, they're known as whitewashed. Now, I'm not saying this is always the case, just an example. But to put it into perspective, a simple act like buying a pair of shoes can make someone feel alienated and isolated from their group. This constant pressure of public trying to put me under a stereotype, if I can't uphold to that standard, it really puts shame to me. So this pressure mixed in with my family's pressure and this immigrant mentality kind of puts me in the middle of two sides. It's a game of tug of war where no side wins. So on one side of the route, on the one side of the coin, I run the route of whitewashing, where I'm blending into American society. And on the other side of the coin, I run the route of cultural stereotyping. What do you think of when you think of an American family? Probably a, something out of a Disney movie. White picket fence, dog, football going in the background, a normal white family. And what do you think of when you think of an Indian family? Probably someone smart and nerdy, like how we're portrayed in Disney movies, like Baljeet from Phineas and Ferb, or Ravi from Jesse. And these are a bunch of examples of stereotypes. But as an Indian, I don't see myself falling into any of these. It's like I'm battling between two different cultures that are so very different, and I can't really choose one. Because of this fork in the road I'm constantly at, I feel disjointed in my daily life. The most obvious is my inability to speak my own language of Telugu properly. I only knew stuff from Telugu from movies and reading subtitles on them. I can basically tell you or guess what the plot of the movie is and just hope I know what I'm saying. And this obvious incapacity has been recently exhibited by my interactions with my grandparents. Yes, you're thinking right. I can't talk to my grandparents properly. I can't hold a single conversation with them without just being like, hi, how are you? Okay, bye. It's rough. But the saddest thing about this is it's not just me facing this problem. It's a whole group of first-generation Americans that are facing this similar pressure as me. Even if the people I talked to at school were primarily Indian, no one ever talks about their culture. We always talk about the latest Spider-Man No Way Home instead of the newest Mahesh Babu movie. And most importantly, a lot of us don't even know about our mother tongues, just like me. We're all under this mindset of trying to succeed that we lose out on an important piece of what defines us. We're blending in with two-way pressure from home and the public that we just can't communicate our differences. And if we can't communicate these differences with the older generation, this newer one will never be able to achieve their dreams. So, while I'm still finding out who I am as a first-generation American, I know the importance of culture, and I'm figuring out who I am. Our generation is becoming a salad bowl, where our opinions are being drenched in the dressings of our parents' experiences. And diversity, which should be the most important ingredient, isn't even being added. So, let's choose our own path and dive straight down the middle. And we should never be bound by any mentality. Let's let our culture shape us authentically and, not, and define us. Even through a barrier, I'm never shut off completely from my culture, and now I never will be. There's so much value through listening to ancient tales, through a translation, or just anything else. It is worth it to know about your culture. Without it, we lose out on a set of unique perspectives and identities, and most importantly, a piece of who we are in America. So, let's make a salad bowl America, where we never lose the pieces of our culture that makes us, us. Thank you. <laughs>